Hello and welcome. My name is Hydro Kimono, and today I want to do something a little bit different. This little series or segment, whatever you want to call it, that I'm going to do that I'm going to be calling Hydro Helps. It came about because I was talking to a friend of mine about some different issues, and I thought, I've got a lot of experience in a whole bunch of different things, so my views and things that have helped me might actually help other people. So for today's topic, we're going to be talking about relationships and more specifically going through a breakup. She was telling me that her daughter is going through this really upsetting breakup and asked me if I had any advice. And I thought about it and I've been through that so many times. At this point, I should be a total pro and it shouldn't bother me whatsoever anytime it does happen. But of course it does. It never gets easier. So I just wanted to relay some of that information, and hopefully it'll help somebody else. I think the most important thing when you're going through a breakup is to understand that it's not the end of the world. There are so many cliches that we throw out all the time. There's plenty of fish in the sea, and if it doesn't work out, there's probably a reason for that, and it's really, it's really hard to see the forest for the trees sometimes, but that's really the most important thing is that it's got nothing to do with you, and it's got everything to do with them, and I think that really is, majority of the time, the case. Um, I know it's been the case for me a lot of times. Uh, the breakup that I went through last, it was, that was the worst one I've ever had. So a little background on me, just real quick. Um, the, my last girlfriend was the total love of my life. That was my soulmate. I thought this is going to be the person that I marry. We had so much in common and everything worked out for so long. We were best friends before that. And one argument, one argument that we had the entire time that we were together and then that was that was enough for her. She decided that she needed to move on and that I wasn't passionate enough about her and blah, 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 blah. So needless to say, I was completely destroyed by it. Just totally distraught, inconsolable, had no idea what to do. And I was really shocked at the amount of people that actually cared. Even people I didn't think would care about something like that or about me as an individual were totally there. And I think that sometimes it takes something like that to really see who your friends are and who really, really cares about you. And one of the most important things that was told to me, that was given to me as advice, I, I'm going to give to everybody else, my friend Shauna, who, for anybody that knows her, is an amazing person. and She's one of those people that is happy all the time, surrounded by great people, has lots of great friends, and just has this life that you look at and you think, that's what I want. I want to be like that. And so I'm talking to her, and she's given me different tidbits of advice. And the most, the most important takeaway that I got is when she said this. She was asking me how I felt about it and and how my ex was dealing with it. And I was like, well, of course she's out God doing God knows what, you know, having a good time probably. And she says, well, don't you think that you deserve somebody who would be just as destroyed as you are if you guys weren't together? And I was like, wow, that is totally true. I think that we get into a situation where we don't think about ourselves as great people, you know, we get, we get into this whole funk and the, this whole downward spiral of, I must totally suck as a person because this person doesn't want to be with me anymore and they are totally happy just being with a total stranger and what did I do wrong and things like that, which is completely, completely wrong. Obviously, if somebody leaves you, especially if they leave for somebody else, they never really cared about you that much to begin with. Anybody that really cares about somebody wants to go through and work stuff out. They don't just up and leave you. If anything, they, they really sit down and try to make you understand how they feel about it and work things out. They don't just up and leave. And I think that that was, when she said that, it really just clicked. And I thought to myself, that's exactly what I deserve. I deserve somebody who... Lo completely loves me for me, and I don't need to try to impress anybody. I, I don't usually anyway, but I don't need to work that hard at it. I shouldn't have to. That's not how relationships, good relationships and love and all that should be. It should be relatively effortless. You meet somebody, you have chemistry, you really click, 
you get along really well. You might have your ups and downs, but it's not something that you have to constantly be working really hard at. If you're working that hard at it all the time, there's a problem. Nothing's perfect. It's maybe 1-2% of the population is going to meet somebody where they never have to do anything and everything just falls into place and works out perfectly. But it should be really, really easy. So that was one of the most important pieces of advice that I got that really turned things around for me is that, yeah, this person doesn't really care that much about my well-being, how I feel about it, or didn't care enough to even try to work things out even after the fact. So why am I so upset about it? Why am I so upset about somebody who ne didn't care that much to begin with? So I think that that is a great piece of advice to be that was given to me that I'm now sharing with everyone else. I think another important thing to remember too are things that helped me were obviously hanging out with my really close friends. They knew what was going on and they didn't sit there and give me lectures or anything like that. They just wanted to make sure that I was okay and that they took me out and we had a good time. Laughing and smiling and having a good time goes a long way to getting over something. And I know how hard it is. I think that for me, the night time was the, the, my, totally my enemy. When I had to close my eyes at night, that's all I saw. I just saw words that were said, things that were written, and the good times, the bad times, her face everywhere I looked, and it was just, it just drove me insane. So it's really hard to kind of get around that. Uh, the best advice I could give for that is what I used to do that actually did help me. It sounds really stupid, but I would just have my laptop next to my bed, and I would just put on a bunch of episodes of Family Guy or The Simpsons or just anything that would make me laugh or take my mind off it, especially things that I knew really well. And I was able to just tune my mind out and just fall asleep. It sounds really dumb, but it really did help me. It's I don't know where I would be without the Simpsons and the good friends that I had, so call it stupid, but it totally works for me. I think that getting your mind off things is a really important thing. And everybody's different. Everybody's going to cope with things in a different way. I think that another thing that might work for some people, too, would be to really think about it to death. You know, think about the entire situation, think about everything, and go through the cycle of all the emotions that you're going to go through. And as long as you can do that in a really healthy environment and not get to the point where you're just completely depressed and just thinking all these really bad things, that might actually help because you can cycle through all your emotions and get everything just completely out of the way. That might help for some people. I've I've done that before, too, and you almost feel like you have to hit rock bottom before you can work your way back up. So take that advice with a grain of salt. It might help some people. It might not help others. Cause the other side of that coin is it's also not good to just repress everything and pretend like nothing happened. I think that's a big mistake, too, and I think that's a, something that a lot of people do. I think that we're almost trained to be like, it's okay. I'll just I'll just forget about it. And eventually it's going to come up. Subconsciously, you're going to be thinking about it all the time. And there, you really do need to deal with your emotions at some point. But, so, that's another tidbit of advice I can give. Uh, another thing that really worked for me, too, is that I'm, I'm into learning about Buddhism and Hinduism and all kinds of, you know, spirituality things. And that was one of the things that really got me into that is I started going going you know into the bookstores and into iTunes and looking at audio books and reading Ram Dass and Deepak Chopra and Anthony Robbins just all kinds of stuff just anything I could get my hands on Eckhart Tolle was another really big one too and I from the audio books that I was listening to and the books that I was reading I realized there's so much more to what's going on around us, and I shouldn't just be worried about this one person that really, in the grand scheme of things, is just a footnote in my life, you know. This wasn't something that we didn't get married, we didn't have kids, we weren't together for 15 years or anything like that. It's just, That's just one tiny little chapter 
in my whole existence. So, again, not something that's necessarily going to work for everybody, but for me, I just went into this thing, and just the more I read, the more I loved it, and the more I felt better, because I'm reading these things, and especially, like, Hinduism is very love-based, and Buddhism kind of goes along with that, just about how you treat people and seeing people differently, and um, it really helped me out, especially Ram Dass. Ram Dass wrote a book called uh, Be Love Now, and didn't start out exactly like I thought. It's more his story about when he was in India, but in that book, he describes love, and he's talking about a couple that he knows, and just the pure love that they have, and about how effortless it is, and when you have actual real love, you don't have to work hard at it at all, just to my earlier point. And when I read that, I actually, I thought that was really great, but at the same time, I felt kind of sad because I thought, have I ever experienced that kind of love? Just completely unconditional. And how many people have ever really experienced that? I feel like any love that I experienced was conditional. You know, the conditions were... I had to be doing the right things all the time. I had to be, you know, just this certain type of person or whatever. Almost not, not a fake person, but it's just like, you know, the people that you feel like you can't completely be yourself around because they're going to look at you like you're weird because I'm a big, I'm a big nerd. I like sci-fi and video games and stuff like that. And sometimes you're with somebody who likes you for certain reasons. And if you just opened up the floodgates and said, oh, here's me, they might not accept you. And I think it's been like that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it's been like that a lot, way too much actually. And I sort of think, I think a lot of people probably feel like that. I'm not sure how many people have actually really experienced that level of love before where it's completely 100% unconditional. And somebody loves you 100% for you, the person that you are, the entire package, the good, the bad, and the ugly. How many people actually experience that? And I think that that's something that all all people should experience. Another thing in the book that he talks about is opening up your heart to everybody. And I think, to me, that's a double-edged sword. Reading it and really practicing it, I think that it's made me feel great as a person. And I think that I really treat others a lot better than I did before. Not that I was treating others bad before, but I think that now I treat everybody with a way more love and respect. Not that I'm perfect by any means, but... That actually that actually helped out, too, because I kind of learned how to do that. But at the same time, now you're opening up your heart, and it's like everybody you meet you're in love with, you know? You're, you're an amazing person. I love you. You're an amazing person. I love you, you know? So it's, um, it's a double-edged sword. But anyway, now I'm rambling. Now I'm getting on this whole spirituality thing. So hopefully something that I've said has actually helped you. I may do a second follow-up video if I think of a whole bunch of other things that, that will help people, but I think that anybody going through a breakup, heartache, any of that, I think that here's a quick rundown of things that you should you should think about. One thing, do not keep contacting the person that's breaking up with you. That is the worst thing that you can do. Trust me, I know from experience, and it just doesn't get you anywhere. If anything, they just completely or turned off to that. Let them be. Somebody breaks up with you, say, okay, well, that kind of sucks, but whatever. Let Do not contact them one bit at all. No text messages, no emails, no calls, no Facebooking, none of it. Let them be. If they get to a point where they kind of realize they've made a mistake, they will come to you. Guaranteed. It's exactly how it's going to work. Also, try not to think about it too much. It's okay to think about it, do not repress it, but do not overthink any of it. Hang out with your close friends. Your close friends and family, the people that really care about you are going to be the most important people at this point. They want to see you get better, they want to see you get over it, they want to see you with somebody who actually loves you and wants to be with you. Do not break any of those ties with those people. Do not alienate those people. You're going to feel like you want to be alone, that's okay too. But when those people are offering and they want to take you out, just think about saying yes, because they're doing it for the right reasons, and they want to see you happy. Try getting them into a hobby. If you have something like, for me, it was photography. Try just throwing yourself into that. Really get out there and work on something that you want to get better at. 
That will also take your mind off it, plus you're bettering yourself. If getting into spirituality or something like that is something that you want to do, by all means, jump into it. Like I said, I can recommend Ram Dass, I can recommend Anthony Robbins, Eckhart Tolle, um, all kinds of people. So I can leave more in the comments if somebody is really interested in doing that. So, and always remember that you deserve the love that you want. Do not settle. And if somebody is not willing to give you that, they're not right for you anyway. At some point it wasn't going to work out, whether it was a month later or a year later, at some point it just wasn't going to happen. You deserve somebody who wants to be with you and only with you and wants to be with you because of you as a total person. Always remember that. For anybody who's in high school, the best advice I can give you is that majority of the time, your high school relationships a lot of times don't work out. I do know a few people who married the person that they met in high school, but if I could go back and do it all over again, I would have done everything differently. High school relationships, some of my best friends I met in high school and we're still really close, but you meet so many people throughout your life, whether you're in college, once you start working, any of that, just the hobbies that you're doing, different interests, you meet so many people. Do not get hung up on this person that broke up with you if you're in high school. That person, like I said earlier, is just going to be a footnote in your life. You may meet the love of your life in college. You may meet them after you've graduated and you're working. Do not get hung up on something like that because your life is about to start. I think for most people, life really starts after, after high school. High school is something you just have to push through and get done with, and then everything opens up to you. For those of you who are going to college, um, going away to college, it's going to be amazing. You're going to meet so many different kinds of people, and it's going to be a great experience. Instead of just being in this little confined space every day in high school, just with the same people all the time, you've got this college campus, which is huge. So just think about that. Keep the friendships, definitely, but do not get hung up on the boyfriend or girlfriend that dumped you after going out for three months in high school. They will be insignificant in the future. You'll meet people in college, you'll meet people at work, you'll meet people all over the pit, all over the place. You might meet somebody at Target. Who knows? Just do not get hung up on that. Anyway, if anybody has any suggestions for other people going through something like this, anything that they want to throw in there that maybe I didn't mention, anything that I can elaborate on, by no means am I an expert. I should be because I've gone through so many breakups, it is ridiculous, I don't even want to think about it. I could probably easily be some kind of therapist or something, but obviously I'm not. But I've been through it so many times, I feel like I do have good advice. So if anybody wants to leave their advice in the comments, absolutely feel free to do that. If there's anything you want me to elaborate on, definitely I can do that. I can even do a second video if there's one portion of this that everybody wants me to expand on. I have no problem doing that. Hopefully this helps you guys. I did this because I care about people's well-being. I want people to be able to get through stuff like that. And I want people to know that there are other people out there going through the same thing and other people who've been through it many, many times like myself. And you're not alone. There are millions of people going through the same thing and you shouldn't feel bad or depressed about that. Time heals all wounds. It really does. And if this can help one person, then I feel like I've done a pretty good job. So anyway, thank you for watching and have a good night. Take care.